right, we're gonna open up. We're gonna open up Photoshop here and test out that last render we did. So I'm gonna uh, open that up and let's see. We just want to test out to see if our image came in transparent. Which the window is black. We need to see that transparent. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna have to re-render this. I'm going back into 3D Max. I'm gonna hit Alt W here so we can uh, maximize here. All right, I'm gonna select this window right here. My object properties, and you know what? Actually, let me hit P. So we're in perspective. Right-click, hide unselected, Z up on this window, and uh, definitely you might want to delete your backs. Uh, I think I pre-delete my backs earlier, so just to let you know there's some backs faces here that you might want to delete. I don't know if it's really quite necessary, but feel free to. All right, uh, I'm gonna click on the object here object properties and we're gonna make this not renderable or I'm sorry we're gonna make this invisible to camera so when we render it we don't quite see it but then we're gonna render it by itself alright so I'm gonna go back on hide all let's go back to camera one alright so now we're gonna render this out That looks pretty good. I'm going to save that out as a our new diffuse one with a PNG setup. So we're saving as PNG. I'm going to overwrite the old one with my alpha checked. Press OK. So now when we open this one up, I'll just update that. We have the transparency. That way we can, you know, composite an image in there. Alright, so there goes our first render. Let's go ahead and um, just render the window by itself. So I'm going to hide unselected, right click, object properties. I'm going to make that visible to camera. Press OK, and then I'm going to render this out. Just like that. And then I guess we can uh, possibly save that out. We'll just call this glass. We may use it to overlay. PNG. And then I'm going to go save Alpha Channel. All right. Now let's unhide everything else. And we're going to make that again object properties. I'm going to make it invisible to the camera again because now we're going to set up our ambient occlusion pass. So I'm going to walk you through this again. We're going to switch to a different renderer. We're going to go to render setup. Uh, we're going to go to our common tab here and sign this renderer to mental ray. Press OK. Uh, let's go ahead and hit our M key. I'm going to move this over. Alright, we're going to grab a blank shader here. I'm going to go in my standard box. We're going to look for our mental ray shader. There it is. I'm going to double click that. Inside our surface slot, we're going to look for our ambient pass, ambient reflective occlusion. I double click that, and then uh, I'm going to change this to 64. My max distance to zero, this way it doesn't get blown out. By the way, your samples, you know, you double them by two, or you multiply them by two, so 16 times two, times two is 32, and then times 32, two times 32 is 64, then 128. And the higher you go, the more detailed your samples will be uh, samples in your soft shadow but of course you're sacrificing more render time for that all right so we got that all taken care of let's go to our parent level we're just going to click that until it's grayed out to where you can't click it no more we're going to call this our AO pass all right and then uh, we're going to take that in our processing tab right here just click processing enable material override and we are going to drag that from the map right here onto the none slot. Uh, let's make sure we got the right one here. Oh, I'm sorry, we're dragging it from here to the none slot. Instance. There we go. And then from our rendering tab, we're going to switch this to one. I'm going to go 64 and then Mitchell. All right, so now that should take care of our ambient occlusion pass and as you can see 
I went ahead and made this window again invisible to camera because I don't want the ambient pass to be hitting it. So when we render it out, there we go. That looks pretty good. You know, technically we could probably turn off our light too. So we just get the ambient pass itself because we already have the light in the diffuse render, but then again we can always double combine them. Alright, just about done. All right, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, save that out as my AL pass. We'll just call this AL pass. Save it as a PNG. All right, and then we're gonna take these images and into, you know into Photoshop and composite them. All right, let's go ahead and uh, take these renders and uh, composite them in Photoshop. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch up Photoshop. We have our first diffuse already open. Uh, you know, if not, I'll close it so you know where we're going. Open. We got our diffuse. We'll open up our AO pass and our glass pass. And we'll start. And then we'll get, of course, an image that we can composite with. And I grabbed one a while back. There's this one. All right. First things first. Let's uh, let's move these out the way. Working with our diffuse pass here. I'm gonna grab my AO pass, click it, hold down shift, drag it, and it should slap it right on top. We're gonna you know what? Just because I like to adjust my AO pass, if I go to curves, I have this selected, my AO pass. I'm gonna go to images, adjustment, curves. I'm gonna kinda brighten that up so you can see, you know, the original one that one side by side so I'm kind of brightening it up that looks pretty good I don't want to blow it out too much all right then I'm gonna to go to my red channel and probably bring that slightly down maybe go to my green crank that up just a little bit just to give it a stylized look and you know what, maybe go to my blue channel and let's see, we can probably crank it up or not, I'm just going to slightly bring it down. Alright, then of course, uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. I guess I'm going to go with that. So, whoops. Like I said, the whole idea behind it is to just kind of stylize things. This is the original ambient, this is the new one. Alright, so now with that, I'm going to go ahead and take uh, this background image here. And you know what? I'm gonna just crop something out of it. You know, something I can use, something about like that. And I'm just gonna move that over here. Let's close this out. I'm gonna hit a uh, Control T. That way I can, uh, you know, hit Shift and Alt as well, so I can uniform scale it. And I'm just gonna place this right by the window somewhere, right about here, I suppose. All right, here, let me maximize this. And with that, I'll probably just uh, scoot this right under the back layer. So now we have, whoops, we have this image and I'm just gonna kind of position it somewhere in there. Let's go something like that, that's fine. All right, now with our ambient pass here, Let's go ahead and name this. We'll, we'll start naming our layers here. We're going to say this is our backdrop trees. This right here is our diffuse pass. And this is our ambient pass. 
pass uh, AO pass. All right, the next step is we're going to take this AO pass. We're going to multiply it just like that. And we're going to bring this down 75%. Just like that. So we get our shadows and our soft shadows into the scene. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close this one out. Now we have our last one, our window here. I'll probably just drop that right in there. And of course we want to be able to see the window. So we can do a couple things. We can probably take this layer here and you know work with the multiples. Come down, and shuffle through. We'll probably use maybe like a light no screen looks pretty good. Color dodge ain't too bad. Color linear dodge actually looks pretty cool. So we actually might use that. I might yeah, composite that. Something like that looks pretty good. Alright, um so yeah, we can go from there. We have that. It looks like we got everything all composited in. So now what I'm gonna do is actually um you know we can do a couple things. We can probably add some filter effects to certain layers or just collapse everything. So I'm gonna go to my backdrop and maybe go to my filter gallery. Let's go, uh, let's try a, oops, let's try a diffuse on that. Uh, no, that looks pretty good, I guess. I don't know if we can really tell. So we can do a couple things. We can put diffuses on a lot of stuff. Let's try to blow it out on um, right here on, on the diffuse layer. So what I'm going to do is put a filter gallery and another diffuse on there. As you can see, we can uh, probably increase it and blow it out. Got clear amount. Just doing something like that can help really enhance the image. Let's see. All right, so that looks pretty good. And then maybe, um, yeah, maybe even do just a slight little bit more just to blow it out. Just because I think it looks cool. Oh, not that much. Maybe something like that. There we go. All right, and there you go. You have your basic composite here. You know, if I want to add some other kind of effects to it, I could. I guess, you know, we can sit here and, you know, I can flatten the image out. I'm going to unlock that by double clicking. And then, you know, maybe I want to add, hmm, let's see, uh, maybe a photo filter or something. Uh, let's go to image adjustments. Uh, photo filter and we can add some kind of warming filters in there to combine of course we have the luminosity otherwise it's the uncheck it's straight tint we don't want to go too crazy but you know that can help enhance the image a little bit uh, maybe you want to get cheap and uh, add a simple uh, crappy lens flare maybe we'll pop it right by the window and let's go with the 35 no oh. That looks pretty good. No. Put it on right on the corner there. We got something like that. I don't know. Just testing things out. Maybe I'll add just a little noise in there. Whoops. And we'll go Gaussian. We don't want to go that much. But just a little bit noise. Not nothing crazy. Something like that, and then there you go. We have a basic composite using our three layers, which were, go back to our renders. We had our AO pass, our diffuse, and our glass, along with a background image. And that is your compositing at its most basic form. So feel free to finish up your labs. And what I'd like for you to do let me go ahead and save this out file save as and we'll go ahead and um, say this is a JPEG we'll call this uh, lab 02 we'll just go interior lighting and we'll say daytime now you are responsible for doing an interior sunset and an interior nighttime 
I'm gonna go ahead and save that out and you'll post this up into the forums. Now make sure you change your camera angle. So to finish up your labs, these are to my students by the way. Um, if you go to if you go back to 3D Max, like for example, I'm gonna go to P. I maybe come in here and um, switch the camera to and then go to my active shade render and then my light lister and set up some different types of looks so maybe I'll go moonlight it's gonna go a little bit darker all right as you can see we're starting to get moonlight like a moonlight tint maybe the fill light would be a little bit darker Uh, maybe we'll go one more. I'll copy that over. And we can probably bring these down maybe at a 0.5. Maybe this would be 1.0. Whoops, not 11. I'm not blowing that out. Just doing different looks like that. And then, you know, of course, if we um, came back in, went to our regular render and got our volume light back in. Oops. Let me switch to scan line render uh, we'll talk more about mental ray renders later all right and there you go that would be our you know moonlight setup and then you know you would composite that all right uh, hope you learned a little bit about lighting and um, I'll catch you next video tutorial